Ephesians chapter 3 today, verses 14 through 19. Ephesians chapter 3. I'd like to say this, thank you for being here today. And we want to always be thankful for the ones that listen on the internet, watch it on YouTube, and we're, we're thankful for each one. Ephesians chapter 3, I really want to read, take the text from verse 16, but I want to read 14 through 9, uh, 16, I'm sorry, 14 through 19. <clears throat> Ephesians 3, 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might in his spirit, or by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you again for this opportunity to gather, and we pray that this will be a help to all of us, the ones who listen on the internet, the ones, the saints here, and we're thankful for your love and grace to us in Christ's name. Amen. I didn't have the mic on. I, I knew that something wasn't right. <clears throat> Looking at this passage of Scripture, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 16, we'll take the text out of this, that He would grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. Now you notice that inner man there. And we know what that is. That's our soul. That's your inner man. Well, I put on, on the board... Understanding yourself. That's the title theme of the lesson today. And there's there's many saints uh, probably don't understand about the inner man. And, and when you don't understand about the inner man, you don't know yourself. You don't understand yourself. And that's what we need to learn today as far as understanding yourself, understanding who we are, who I really am. And but the only way we can do that is by the Word of God. And Paul's going to tell us this. He's praying here for these believers at Ephesus, and he's praying that they would be strengthened there in verse 16, that to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That's your strength. You've got to be strengthened inside, not outside. And that's the confusion that people have today. They think that, hey, I'll be strengthened on the outside to be able to stand up and speak, to do this, to do that. The strength comes inside, then it goes outside. But you've got to be strengthened inside to do that. And, you know, I, I thought about this too here. Our ministry here at Clear Springs Bible Church, if you were to ask, uh, ask yourself this, this question, what verse in the Bible describes our ministry here at Clear Springs Bible Church? And you ought to ask yourself that and look and try to find a verse. Well, here's what I found. Look in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. This would best describe our ministry here at Clear Springs Bible Church. 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 4. And if you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, look in verses 1 and 2. Now, Paul's talking about himself to the Corinthians, he's writing to them. But understand, as you read 2 Corinthians 4, 1, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, Paul speaking here, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Now, you know, I asked the question, what verse of the Bible describes our ministry here at this assembly? Well, Paul's describing his ministry in 2 Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. Well, that would also describe our ministry. You look in verse 2 there, but have, but, re, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. And that's what we've done. We, we've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. We're, we want to be honest in the sight of all men. When you renounce something, you reject it. You know, we don't want to be dishonest in any way. And he also says not walking in craftiness. And that craftiness means somebody that walks, they're slick, they're sly, they're tricky, 
gimmicks. We don't walk that way here at our assembly. And then he said, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. And we don't handle the word of God deceitfully. When you handle the word of God deceitfully, what, what man does, they bring scripture, they use scripture, but it's not dispensationally. And if you don't write, rightly divide the word of truth, then you're not, you're not handling the word of God right. You're deceitful. So when they do that, they're making the word say something it doesn't say. We do not do that here. Well, what does our ministry do then? I gave you what we don't do. What does our ministry do? Well, we do. How do we commend it to every man's conscience? You read that in verse uh, two there. But how renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So, how do we commend every man's conscience? by manifestation of the truth there in that verse. And you think about the word manifestation. And if you look at the Noah Webster's dictionary, that word manifestation, it's an act of dis 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 disclosing what is secret. And Paul says the manifestation of the truth, well manifestation is the act of disclosing what's secret. Well when you disclose, disclosing means you reveal. You make it known. And guess what Paul did? He made, made the mystery known. You think about this here. We're, we're give, Paul said, but by manifestation of the truth, he's giving it out. It is, he's disclosing what's, uh, what's secret, disclosing it. The Lord Jesus Christ gave him the secret, the mystery, and he's giving it out and making it known. That's why you have Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 3. Go over there. Ephesians 3, 3. So in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 3, if you turn there, Paul tells you there about the dispensation of grace when you get over there, Ephesians 3, uh, 2, if you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you. The grace of God was given to Paul. How that by revelation he, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore a few words. Notice that he made known unto me the mystery. Well, when you disclose something, you make it known. And that's what Paul was telling those Corinthians. He's making it known to them. Well, what are we doing? We're following the Apostle Paul. Uh, we're, be ye followers of me, 1 Corinthians 4, 16. We're following Paul. Why do we follow Paul? He's our spokesperson. He's our apostle. And we're, we're making known. We're giving out the mystery. We're telling people. The mystery is not a secret anymore. It's been revealed. It's King, King James Bible was completed in 1611. English speaking, the Word of God is given to English speaking people like us. So it's, it's made known to us. We, we have the truth. And so you think about that when you look at Ephesians 3.16, Paul says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Notice the words according to. Well, you've got to see the source in the verse here. To the riches of his glory. There, there it is. Well, what does Paul want to happen with these believers? He's writing the letter to the Ephesians. What does he want to happen to them? Well, verse 16, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. He wants them to be strengthened by might by his spirit in the inner man. Well, how does the spirit do that? Well, in Ephesians 4.23, look at this. How does the, the Holy Spirit strengthen us? Well, in Ephesians 4.23, and be, re, be, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. When you're renewed in the spirit of your mind, you're re-educated. Well, how are you re-educated? You're re-educated by the Word of God. As you take the Word in, you put it in your inner man. You're re-educated re in your inner man. And you think about, you know, understanding yourself. And there's, there's no, and I've got on the board for you, spirit, soul, and body on one side of the board, but also I've got on the other side, body, soul, and spirit. Now what do you hear believers talk about more? They'll, a lot of believers will use the first word out of their mouth will be, be body, soul, and spirit. And that's not the order that God wants us to go by and live by. Uh, the order we should live by is spirit, soul, and body. And there's a reason for that. That's why understanding yourself, if, you don't, if we don't understand ourselves through the Word of God, 
we'll never understand that it's got to be spirit, soul, and body. So turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And look at verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. Talk about our inward man, our outward man. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Notice you've got the inward man and you've got the outward man. You know, how did God, the question we, we got to ask ourselves, how did God create man to function? Inward man. And you know, sir, and it's renewed day by day. Wonder why it would be inward man. Well, we know that the outward man is going to perish. But here, here's a good verse for our learning why it ought to be inward man. Look at Proverbs chapter 4. Right after Psalms, Proverbs chapter 4. And look at verse 23. Proverbs 4, 23. This is an interesting verse. When you, when you look at this. This is for our learning. In Proverbs 4.23, we're talking about how did God create man to function? Inward man. And here's why. Proverbs 4.23. In Proverbs chapter 4, in verse 23, notice what he says there, and I'm in the wrong page. I'm in Psalms, but it won't work. No wonder. Proverbs 4.23. One second. Our pages are new and they're hard to turn sometimes. Proverbs 4.23. The question is, how did God create man to function? Inward man. This is why. Proverbs 4.23. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Now, comma. Now, or semicolon. Notice their heart. That's your inner man. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. You know, the issues of life come from our inner man. It comes from our heart. And that's what the verse is telling you. So you've got to feed that inner man. Uh, and, and then you've got to renew your inner man. Now go back, all the way back to Genesis chapter 2. And let me give you this about the spirit, soul, and body. This is something you may already know and you may not know. So in Genesis chapter 2, and we'll see something here. In Genesis chapter 2, and look at verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed in his nostrils a breath of life, and man became a living soul. So you've got spirit, soul, and body in this verse. Genesis 2, 7. And notice there in verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. There's your body. That's how he created our body, dust of the ground. And also, and breathed in his nostrils a breath of life. There's the Spirit. And man became a living soul. And there's our soul. So you'll see there all three listed here. And you think about going over in this time period we live in. We're in the dispensation of grace. How does Paul list these for us? How should we function as believers? We understand that a man... It's got a body, soul, and spirit, spirit, soul, and body. We, are, we learn that in, in Genesis 2, 7. But how, do we, how should we function in this day dispensation of grace? We'll turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And look at this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And verse 23. Paul will tell us how we should live. Spirit, soul, and body. Look at the order. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Notice that holy there. And I pray, God, that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that, there you have the order, the way that we ought to function today, is spirit, soul, and body. And you'll find there, it talks about, and I pray God your whole, uh, well, first of all, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, and the very God of peace. No so peace there. Well, how do you get peace? We won't turn to it, but it's in Romans 15, in believing. When you believe the Word of God, 
you'll get the peace if you, when you rightly divide the word of truth. You have to believe something. You have to believe the word. Peace is an inner attitude of the heart. That's why it's so important. You've got to believe what the Word of God says. You've got to learn how to rightly divide the Word of truth. What's to us? What's for our learning? If you want peace in your inner man, you have to read and study and, and put the Word of God in your inner man. Let me share with you how important this verse is. Turn to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. We've been learning this here in the last couple of weeks about Hebrews 4.12. Let me ask you this question. We need to understand yourself. Well, what's the only way to understand what's going on inside of you? If I want to know what's going on inside of me, what's the best way to do that? Well, look at Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4.12. For the Word of God is quick, now we always say it's, it's alive, and it is, and it's living, but that word quick means also fast. For the Word of God is fast and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and of the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. You know, you think about what's the word do there, it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, Piercing even dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and also the joints and marrow. Well, what's the joints and marrow? That's inside your body. So what do you got in that verse there? You got spirit, soul, and body in that verse. And the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And you know what the word of God does? The word of God will divide. It divides the there's a difference between our soul and our spirit. And it divides. And we can't do that. The Word's what does it. So what's, what's doing the dividing and discerning? The Word of God is. And that's why to understand yourself, you've got to get in the Word of God, read it, believe what you read, and let the Word work in you. And the question, this leads to this question. Why can't human viewpoint go fix the problem? You have a problem in your life. And you know, out of the hearts, the issues of life, you've got a problem in your life. And you start going to human viewpoint. You start reading novels and books and different things and they exclude the Bible. Leave it out. Well, human viewpoint cannot fix your problem. Never will fix it. Well, and because you've got to take the Word in and you see Hebrews 4.12, what the Word of God does. I mean, that's all, the only thing that can do this in my inner man is God's Word. And when you get a hold of it, Hebrews 4.12, how, how it works fast. Whenever I started coming to the knowledge of the truth, it worked fast in me. I believed it. I didn't have an issue of getting rid of human viewpoint. I didn't have an issue of quit following man. Because I, I'm going to believe what's right. The word's right. Man's not right. And so I quit following man. And I quit following human viewpoint. Let me give you another example. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're trying to understand ourselves, yourself. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we'll read verses 11 and 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. In verse 11, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. And you'll notice there in verse 11, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? So, that there's a spirit of man within all of us. That's what it tells you. And why? We can communicate and talk to each other and function with each other. We've got to have that. Uh, what do we have to have to communicate with God? Look at verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. You've got to have the spirit of God. 
Now, you, you think about this. You think about spirit, soul, and body. And you think about this flesh, this body of ours. I may have given the verse last week, but some of you weren't here. Go to Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14. I'm getting there. I'm a little bit slow. Job chapter 14. And we're going to read uh, verse 22. Job 14, 22. But his flesh upon him shall have pain. Now I should notice that. And his soul within him shall mourn. And what you have right there by reading that verse, the Bible tells you the body and soul are completely different. They're different. You've got, a, you've got flesh, that's your body, shall have pain. And if, you, if you've never had pain, I don't believe you're telling the truth. We've all had pain. Well, look at what else. And your, his soul within him shall mourn. So there's a difference there. The body and our soul are different. We're not our flesh. Our body is on us, but our soul is inside this body. That's what you need to learn from that. Look in uh, John 4, chapter 4. Speaking with that that way, John chapter 4. We're just trying to understand yourself, myself. John chapter 4. And look at verse 24. John 4, 24. And in verse 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Now notice that, that God is a spirit, and they that worship Him. How are you going to worship Him? Must worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's all way you can worship Him. You know, that's, you think about communicating with God. Where are we going to worship God? Ask yourself that question. Well, John 4, 24, in spirit and in truth. Now, I know said in spirit. You think about that. It's all way you, you've got, we've all got a spirit, soul, and body. The only way you're going to worship Him is in spirit. Your spirit's got a mind. And you worship Him that way, you communicate with Him that way, but also in truth. And when you think about in truth, what kind of truth we're going to worship Him with? A lot of people want to think they can read all the books and all the other things, human viewpoint, and worship God. You can't worship Him that way. You've got to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Well, what's truth? Well, look in John 17, 17. John 17, 17. Mm -hmm. got, man, we've got to worship God in spirit and in truth. Well, what's truth? John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Now that's what truth is. That's how you worship God. In truth, you worship the word of God. That's how you worship God. Well, notice there, Thy word is truth. Have you ever read 2 Timothy 2.15? And we all have. And it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a word that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now let me ask you this. If we worship God in spirit and in truth, the word of God is truth. And for me, you've got to rightly divide the word of truth. And if you don't rightly divide the word of truth, are you worshiping God? And the answer would be no. You're going to worship in truth. Thy word is truth. You've got to rightly divide the word of truth to worship Him. So, those are thoughts that you can think about. You know the flesh is not involved in communicating with God. Not none whatsoever. This old body of flesh, it's not involved in communicating. Why did God give us a spirit? That's a, that's a simple question. Because we can talk to Him. We can communicate to Him. That's why He gave us a spirit. We can, 
we can take and hear the Word of God taught and preached and take it in our soul, our spirit, our mind. And if it's, it's true, we can put it down in our soul. And our soul's got a mind. Our soul's got a will. Our soul has emotions, volition. And you, you think of that. It's got a conscience, our soul does. So, it's very important. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Well, how did Paul serve the Lord Jesus Christ? Now turn to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, and I hope you see what I'm getting at, understanding yourself. And the sad thing is a lot of, a lot of people do not, believers, do not understand themselves. Romans chapter 1, and look at verse 9. Romans 1, 9. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of His Son, that I, without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Now if you read this verse and believe what you read, how did Paul serve the Lord? Notice that. With my spirit in the gospel. Now that's how he served him. With my spirit. Very important that you understand about spirit, soul, and body. Paul served the Lord with his spirit. Alright? Thinking along that line, turn to Matthew chapter 16. We'll look at the word soul. Matthew chapter 16. Man's made up of spirit, soul, and body. We serve the Lord with our spirit. Well, Matthew chapter 16 Look at verses 25 and 26. Matthew 16, 25. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Notice that own soul. Everybody has a soul and your soul belongs to you. That's who you are. Uh, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of His Father with His... Uh, verse 25. I meant to read verse 25. Let me back up. Matthew 16, 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose, his, lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what man? For what is a man profited if he, shall, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Now we know it's talking about Man's lost, he dies, and he goes to eternal hell. He'll lose his soul. We've all got a soul. And it's very important that you see that. And, and lose his own soul. That's you. Your own soul. Uh, your personal identity. You can't, you can't share your soul with anyone else. There's not anybody. I cannot share my soul with Connie, my wife. You cannot share your soul with your spouse or your family members and all that doesn't work that way. You've got your own soul. So, you know the body now, we, we can share with everybody else. And uh, why organ donors? You can give your heart, you can give your lungs, whatever. Different things. But we can share that, but you cannot share your soul. And you have to remember that. Talking about spirit, soul, and body. And you think about body, how am I going to relate to the environment around me today? And here's the answer. Here's, here's an answer that Satan has. How am I going to relate to the environment around me today? Turn to James chapter 5. No, I'm sorry. That's not the verse. James chapter 3. James chapter 3. <clears throat> James chapter 3. And we're going to look in James chapter 3, look in verses 15, 16, and 17. James 3, 15. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without uh, partiality and without hypocrisy. 
and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Notice verse 15, the wisdom, this wisdom sinneth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. I don't think I read that verse. You see that in verse 15? 15, you read verse 15, there's a wisdom here that I want you to see. You also, in verse 17, there's a wisdom there. Well, what's the, there's two wisdoms there. Verse 15, the wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. And you'll notice that there, who's behind that there? That's satanic wisdom there. When you think about there, the wisdom, verse 15, James 3, 15, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Satan's behind that. But verse 17, but the wisdom is from above, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. You can read on the rest of the verse. So satanic wisdom, how does Satan's satanic wisdom work if you read James 3.15? Look at it. Look at the order in James 3.15. You've got earthly. Well, what's that remind you of? We read in Genesis, there's body. You see that? Then you've got sensual. That relates to the soul. Then you've got devilish, and there's the spirit. You see the order of their body, soul, and spirit. Now that's how Satan's wisdom operates. And that's how Satan wants even all believers to operate today. He wants us to operate body, soul, and spirit. And we're going to see it's bad when you do that. God wants us to function spirit, soul, and body. That earthly, you read about there in James 3.15, the earthly there talks about that body that body has emotions. That's what it has. And they're, they're, and whenever you operate body, soul, and spirit, you know what's in charge of your life? Your emotions. You run on emotions. Everything you do is all emotions. It doesn't take much to get you upset. It's all emotions because you're going body, soul, and spirit. And, that's, and those emotions... What they do, whenever you start body, soul, and spirit, you let your emotions run your life, then it's going to usurp authority over your will. It's going to have dominion and control over your will. That's what it does. It'll take control of you, power. And that's why when you look in James 3, 15, there, earthly, essential, and devilish, you know, ask yourself this question, are you living this way? Are you living body, soul, and spirit? Or are you living spirit, soul, and body? And I'll guarantee you, there's no matter of guarantee us, we know that at some point in time, we've all, we all live body, soul, and spirit sometimes. And if you don't put the Word in your inner man, learn how to write it by the Word, well, you're going to live it pretty much all the time, body, soul, and spirit. And your emotions is controlling your soul and spirit when you do that. And on the other side, spirit, soul, and body, when you do that, your spirit and soul controls your body. That flesh. It controls those emotions. It, it, your emotions are not going to control you and, and make the decisions for you. Now here's the problem. You see a lot, like I said, body, soul, and spirit, somebody operates that way, they're immature. They're going backwards on what they little they know. And that, uh, you know, they need resources in their life. Well, what do you need in your life if you're living body, soul, and spirit? You need the truth. Well, thy word's truth, John 17, 17. But you also got to rightly divide the word of truth to get out of that body, soul, and spirit living, to live spirit, soul, and body. You know, the thing about my emotions, I'm going to use my emotions. My emotions, they're dumb, and they're also ignorant. You think about that. You, you let yourself, you let your life, your emotions control you, uh, and we all have, and, and therefore I say mine are dumb, mine are ignorant. And we, why is it that way? Well, God designed our emotions to be responders to the will. You understand the soul's got a will, and God has designed our body to respond to the will of our soul. And the body will not respond to our soul unless we put the Word of God in us. And that's Hebrews 4.12. And it'll work quick in you. 
People say, well, I'm trying. I'm trying to live for the Lord. It's so hard. You know what they're not doing? They're not putting the Word in them like they should. That's a, that's a problem. I, I've been down that road myself. And you, you, you're, we don't put enough of the Word in us. And whenever I decided to put the Word in my soul, spirit, soul, and body, then the will acted and operated on sound doctrine, then it, my spirit and soul then will control that body, that flesh. I won't let that flesh get out of control. I don't have the highs and the lows that I used to have. Could it, can I still have them? I can. But I also know how to, how to correct it. I also know that it takes the Word of God to do that. And this is, go back to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. This here is very important to us, really. If you, if you miss this, and I'm speaking to myself, if I miss this, then I'm not functioning based on the way God wants me to function in this life. Ephesians 4.23 And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. There, there's the spirit of your mind there. That's the spirit. My spirit has a mind. I need to take the Word of God in. And as I take it in, then it, it, it sound doctrine and I'll transfer it on down to my soul. My soul's got a mind. But you think about that body of sin with that emotions. Those emotions have activity and have movement. And this old flesh loves activity. This old, old, this old flesh loves movement. Emotions. Loves to get up. And loves for you to get down and out. And you know, where does God put the truth? He puts it in our spirit. I, I got ahead of myself. I say I'm reading the Word of God this morning. And in Ephesians chapter 4 is where I'm at on the page. And I'm reading that. And, and God, the Holy Spirit, is teaching me. Well, God's putting the truth down in my soul. And when He does that, uh, then, that's, then the truth goes from my soul down, from my spirit down to my soul. And when it goes down to my soul, then what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive that body. I'm going to tell that body, no, I'm not living by emotions today. I'm living, I'm walking by faith. I've got... I, my spirit, my soul is going to drive that body around. So that, that's why going back to Ephesians 3.16, you read the verse uh, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. Well, how, did God, how does God strengthen a believer? It's a thinking process. And I want you to think about this. Your spirit has a mind. Your soul has got a mind. And the thinking process is you read the Word of God, you, you put it in your mind, like I said a minute ago, you transfer it down to your soul. Sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. And when you put it down in your soul, then you're, then you have to make the doctrine goes to work in my inner man. The Holy Spirit works through the Word of God and the Word of God is what motivates me, inner man, <laughs> to tell that body, no, I'm not doing it this way. I'm doing it the way God, the Word of God lays it out for me to do. And that's your decision making too. What we do, a lot of times, body, soul, and spirit, we're letting our flesh make our decisions, our choices in life. Then we want to say, well Lord, I'm trying, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do that. Well you may be trying, but you're trying the wrong way. Body, soul, and spirit. You need to go spirit, soul, and body. That leads to another question. Here I am with this flesh, the body, this old sin nature. How do I stop sin in my life? Now I know this. I know whenever I believe the gospel, my sins are forgiven. But I also know that I make a choice every day. Do I sin or not sin? Something comes up, you make that choice. It's your choice. Well, how do I stop sin in my life? You say, well, I have the same old problem every day and every day. Day in, day out. Well, how do I stop? Turn to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. In Titus chapter 2, look at verses 11 and 12. Titus 2, 11. 
In Titus chapter 2 and verse 11, for the grace of God, notice that phrase, the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. You got a comma, so there's more to it. Verse, verse 12, teaching us that. Well, who's teaching us? Verse 11, the grace of God, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly and righteously and God in this present world. Well, the grace of God is teaching us. What's He teaching us? Denying ungodliness. When you deny something, what do you do? You stop doing it. That's what you do. That's how you deny it. You get the word into our thinking process and our heart and will tells emotion, this is what we're going to do and I'm not doing that anymore. And you stop doing it. So you think about, we won't go through all of these, but I'll, I'm going to give you an example. What does a, man, a lost man look like? And I was lost, like you one, at one time, but what did I look like? What's a lost man today? I'm saved now, but what's a lost man look like? Well, Ephesians, we won't turn. Ephesians 2, 1 talks about who were dead. A lost man's dead today. Well, what's dead about him? His spirit. Well, if his spirit's dead, guess what? He can't worship God. He can't communicate with God. And also a lost man, his soul, in Ephesians 4, 18, the understanding darkened. You know, before I got saved, my spirit was dead. My soul was dark. I didn't have the truth in me. No light. And also, Romans 6, 17, the servants of sin. That was my body. So their spirit, soul, and body. That's what a lost man looks like today. So understand this. When you look at people out there and they do things, their actions, their attitude, they may or they may not be saved. And a lost man has got a dead spirit, he's got a dark heart, and he's, got, he's a servant of sin. That old body, he's living body, soul, and spirit like the devil wants him to. He belongs to the devil, and, and therefore he's doing whatever he wants to do. But on the other hand, what happens when we get saved? We're a new man. We're a new creature. It talks about the light of the glorious gospel. The light shines in. We're saved. We believe the gospel. We put off the body of sins of the flesh. We're set free. You've got these in your notes. And neither you or your members, we don't, we don't yield our old flesh now, members of flesh, anymore to sin. And our life is His life. It's Christ. It's not I, but Christ liveth in me. That's how we walk today. And you know what? We let the Word of God work in us as we read and believe it. And it works in you, 1 Thessalonians 2.13. There's a difference in my life now since I've got truth in me. Since I've learned, I don't want to walk body, soul, and spirit. I want to walk spirit, soul, and body so I understand yourself. I understand myself better because the Word of God helps me to understand. And Paul is praying in Ephesians there. We started out Ephesians 3.16. He's praying that the Spirit would strengthen their inner man. 